Git Flow is a development strategy using Git that defines a strict branching model centered around each release of a software product. In this video, I'm going to use Flying Logic to demonstrate what using Git Flow looks like. Our story begins with me initializing a new Git repository on my computer. As in my previous videos, my master branch starts pointing at this first commit, and my head points at master in turn, indicating that commit A is what's currently checked out. Let's say I add a commit or two. Now I'm ready to start using Git flow with my collaborators. The only two branches that Git flow requires are master and develop. The latest commit in master is always my latest product release, and every commit to master is tagged with the release number. On the other hand, develop contains finished features that are ready to go into the next release. We don't have a develop branch yet, so I'll create one on my computer. which automatically checks it out. Now let's add our collaborator Luna to this picture, who clones the repo to her own machine. We'll show this with her own head. Remember, copies of this repository now exist in three places, on my computer, on Luna's computer, and in the cloud at some repository hosting service like GitHub. In this video, I'm giving you a single unified view of everything. GitFlow requires that when I go to work on a new feature, I create a feature branch for it. Features always branch off of develop, and eventually merge back into develop. We'll pretend I'm writing a game, so I'll create a branch and call it feature slash player. This new branch is now checked out. Now I add some commits to my feature branch. At the same time, Luna has also created a feature branch to work on our game's terrain functionality. Then she adds some commits of her own. Now, let's say I'm done with my feature. As I mentioned, feature branches always merge back into the develop branch. With Git, we always merge into the currently checked out branch. So since I want to merge into the develop branch from my finished feature branch, I start by checking out develop. There are two different ways of merging. The first is a fast forward merge of my feature branch, which simply moves the develop branch to point to the same commit as my feature branch. Now the tip of the develop branch includes my commits, This creates a nice linear sequence of commits. However, it also makes it harder to keep track of the commits that went into my feature. So let's undo that. The second method is frequently used with Git flow, and that is to make a merge commit. This is a commit that merges the tip of the develop branch with the tip of my feature branch. Once my feature is merged, the last step is to delete the feature branch itself. When using Git flow, only the master and develop branches stay around forever. The other kinds of branches only exist until they're finished. Now it's Luna's turn to finish her feature. She doesn't have the option of doing a fast forward merge because her merge needs to include the commits I've previously merged and her own commits. But if she hasn't yet pushed her commits F and G to the remote, she can rebase her branch onto the develop branch which rewrites her commit history to make it look like she started her feature branch at the current tip of the develop branch. See my video on Git rebase and merge for more information about how rebasing works. Now Luna is in a position to merge her feature into develop, so she first checks out develop. Just as before, she now has the option of doing a fast forward merge by moving the develop branch to point to commit G. But the git flow way of doing things usually involves merge commits, so let's do that. As before, the last step of finishing a feature is to delete the feature branch itself. Now let's say I start a new feature branch, feature slash power up.
and add a couple commits. But let's say that, as often happens in real life, we decide that my power-up feature isn't going to make it into the first release. This is when we do a feature freeze by starting a new release branch. Release branches always start at the position of the develop branch. We'll call this branch release slash 1.0. Luna will be our release manager, so she creates the new branch and checks it out. The first commit to a release branch should be to bump the version number in the source code. She may also add some other metadata changes or last minute bug fixes. If they're important enough to ongoing development, changes in the release branch can be merged back into develop at any time. But let's say that's not necessary here. We're done with our release changes. So to finish the release, here are the steps. First, Luna checks out master. Then she merges release into master. The commit that master is now pointing at is our actual release commit. So we tag it with the version number. Now Luna checks out develop. Then she merges master into develop so it picks up all the pre-release changes. This can be a fast forward merge where we simply move the develop branch to point to the same commit as the master branch. Finally, we're done with the actual release branch, so Luna deletes it. These are a lot of fairly mechanical steps to go through. Fortunately, there are both command line and GUI tools that automate Git flow procedures like starting and finishing feature branches and starting and finishing releases, making Git flow as easy to use as any other Git command. Going forward, to keep our flying logic document manageable, we can group historical commits and collapse the group to keep them out of the way. Notice that my power up feature branch is still there, not part of the current release, waiting for further work to get it finished. If I haven't yet pushed my feature commits up to the remote, I could now rebase my feature branch onto develop so I know I'm working from the latest of everything. Now we can move even more stuff we don't need to look at anymore into our collapsed group. Now Luna starts a new feature branch to enable our player to fly. She calls it feature slash flying. And she makes some commits. Meanwhile, I'm still working on power up. And I finally decide that it's time to finish that feature. So I check out develop, merge power up in, and delete the feature branch. Now as it happens, our users report a crash in our 1.0 release. We need to fix it immediately. This is where a hotfix branch comes in. Unlike release branches, which are cut from the develop branch, hotfix branches are cut from the master branch. Luna's in the middle of working on a feature, while well, I just finished mine, so I'm going to go fix this bug. I start by checking out master and adding a branch I'll call hotfix slash 1.0.1. I find the bug, fix it, and make my commit. Hotfix branches are merged back into both master and develop. So first I check out master and do that merge. In this case, I can do a fast forward merge. I also tag the new commit at master with the new release number.
Now I switch to develop and merge the hotfix branch in there. This is a regular merge commit. And finally, I delete the hotfix branch. As you can see, Gitflow is a powerful methodology that can keep many developers working on a large code base simultaneously while ensuring high quality releases.